welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Today we're going to do a really fun, fast um, project that I've been wanting to make on my channel for a while. We are going to be making Sincerely Jin's Holiday Armadillo. Every time I read this, I laugh because I can see Ross and his armadillo, <laughs> his outfit, and it's like the funniest episodes, um, episode. So we're going to be making this. The reason why I've been intrigued with this is that most, most patterns for stockings are either like a hundred percent cotton or they're leather or they're most, just mostly those two things or polyester, I guess. And I like the fact when I looked at her pattern, you can clearly see it's cotton, but the cuffs and the accent pieces are vinyl. So I was like, cool, cool, cool. So I wanted to try this. I always have an abundance of scrap cork and there's a lot of scraps that I will, that I will like donate or use as filling or something, but scraps, I hold on like a fire drink. That stuff is worth its weight in gold. Um, so I was thinking, how about we make a, a holiday, a holiday stocking, you'll see the fabric in a minute with blue accents of cork because I only had not even like a fat quarter and I was able to get these pieces in as well as on her pattern you only cut out one of the toe box and one of the accent I'm cutting out both because I wanted the stocking everyone puts their stockings in a different way this is the hard part about making Christmas stockings is this one thing. The reason why I don't embroider because there's some families that have their stockings going to the left and there's some families that have their stockings going to the right. So you have to make them pretty or unique on each side so that way they can fit in with the rest of the family. So we're going to be making it with both and it's a fairly straightforward pattern. I think you're going to like it. Now, if you're like, oh, Shinova, I already have a stocking. Oh my God, why are you doing this? I'm going to tell you what is a great holiday treat. I like to give holiday stockings as a gift. Hear me out, like a gift bag. If I'm going to a holiday party, I'll put like the person's name, like our last name is the Mabry. So it'll be like the Mabry's or if you were coming, you stick a nice bottle of wine or adult beverages or <laughs> a nice bottle of cider or sparkling water. And it's a it's a nice gift, especially a good home, uh, like a home given gift. If like someone's new to your area, that's really sweet to do. Um, as well as there's a lot of teachers that I know around here. So we will make a stocking and then like put um, buy boxes of popcorn and like special little trinkets here and there and you stick in the stocking as a gift. And it's one of my my like go-to gift things because it's really creative. Someone can repurpose it and it's cute. You can even one-up it. Like let's say you bought like a nice cold bottle of some fancy smanchy champagne. You can do an insulated one so it can keep it cold throughout the day. There's a lot of things you can do with it. And again, it is super scrap friendly. So let's go down below. We're going to be making it again, Sincerely Jen. You're gonna need your pattern, main pattern piece. You're gonna need your lining. We've got two of those. This is, um, I buy this fabric from Connecting Threads. It's relatively inexpensive. It's like two, three dollars a yard and it makes really good linings. You're going to need your cuff. So here's my cuff. You're gonna need one hill. Well, two hills, I'm using two. You can use one to follow the pattern. And you're gonna need one hanger. And if you're doing one toe box, there'll be one. If you're doing two like me, you're doing two. The fabric I'm gonna be using is Snow Wars. Oh my God, isn't that cute? Snow Wars. <laughs> you have like darts there. You got some Ewoks. You got people making you know, snow babies and angels. It's super cute. And that's what we're going to get started on. So once you have all your pieces, there's not a lot that you need to do as even far as interfacing. I'm using, this is a canvas, so I did not interface it, but for this thinner um, cotton, I use um, DLH 2010. It's a Catherine 
It's her um, interfacing, and it's it's comparable to Shade Flex 101, except the glue dots are a little bit different, and there's a heck of a lot less shedding of glue. Don't you hate that when the glue just gets all in your nose? <laughs> or is it just me? Um, so we have all these pieces. We're going to cut them and cut them out. And we are going to start with the folded cuff. Okay. We're going to take this cuff over to our machine and sew it at with a half inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to pop a clip on the sides. And we're going to use a half inch. And I'm at a 3.5 stitch length. If it gets really thick, I will increase that. I'm using a 40 weight thread from Wawak. Wawak. I keep saying I'm going to like call them and ask, but I have yet to do it. We're going to flatten these seams and we're going to stitch them down. Um, using a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to kind of just butterfly it. You can use double sided tape, but I'm just, it's such a small portion that I feel like you can have a lot of control over it. Butterfly it, pancake it down. You know my word, your terminology. <laughs> I'm gonna just hop over a few stitches and stitch down the other side. Trim all the rogue threads. All right. Then we're going to um, fold up the bottom of the cuff by one inch. I mean, by a half inch. What I did is I drew a one inch chalk line, uh, as you can see across here, um, before I did all this because reading through the patterns can help you tremendously be, before you start cutting and fusing so you know what, what your master game plan is. So I drew a, a one inch, so I'm gonna put some double-sided tape now and gonna bring this up to the half inch mark. So it can be folded by a half inch. I'm using Wawax double-sided tape. This is not quite one fourth of an inch. I think it's like three sixteenths. I'm, I'm not for certain on this one, but it's not one fourth of an inch, and it's definitely not one eighth. So, it's somewhere in between. But I like the size because I feel like it's not too big, not too small. And I'm just running my finger across the tape because sometimes tape wants to act a little guano crazy. So. <laughs> And we're just bringing it up to that one inch line. So it could be folded over a half an inch. Okay. So then we're going to top stitch one fourth of an inch. Let's see. So I'm going to start, as you can see, I'm on the wrong side the, and I'm sewing from the inside out so that way I can see my top stitching. One fourth of an inch away. I'm measuring just by my um, presser foot. My presser foot is exactly one, one fourth of an inch. So I'm just eyeing the, the edge of this presser foot to where I want to go. Okay. I'm just going to trim these down really, really well. Now, it does say that you could do, you can do a second row of stitching for decorative purpose only, but you only need one. So we're gonna set the cuff aside. You can go do, um, you, it would look really nice 
with the second row of stitching. Um, probably exactly at a half inch, a little, you know what, let's do it because you already know me. Anything extra, I'm always down for. <laughs> It's, and besides, it's not that big of a loop, so why not? All right, so we're going to set this aside for now after we trim everything down. All right, then we're gonna put that on the side. We're going to grab our strap. We're gonna find its center. It's a two inch piece, so one inch should be the center. And we are going to fold this in half. I'm going to use um, a half inch tape here. Outside tape. I always try to finger press it as best as I can because somehow, some way, sometimes the paper doesn't want to lift and it wants to stay on. I'm going to leave a small one eighth of an inch gap in between where the um, where these two meet. So that way they can fold nicely without having a bulge. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some clips. I'm going to take it over to the machine because we're going to fold it in half. Okay. We're going to sew one eighth of an inch down. That's I'm going to be following the inside of my toe box for the one eighth of an inch. And if you're like, hey, that's too much bulk, you can always get some really cute ribbon, twill tape, um, whatever you have on hand. It can be it could be really fun and no bulk, right? Thinner vinyl will work better on this because this is cork. It might be too thick. And if it is too thick, then I'll just grab some ribbon real quick. And I can use this for another project when it's needed. Everything has a purpose eventually. All right. We have that. And you know what? I even have <laughs> ribbon here. So I will assess that when we get to that next point, which is right now. <laughs> we're going to grab one of the lining pieces and we're going to measure one inch from the top and make a mark. I'm going to use a, a chalk mark. You can use a, whatever you want to uh, water soluble iron on. I'm trying the chalk marks, not actually the wisest because you can't see it. There you go. And I think I'll be able to get away with this. I feel like I, I'm in a Scooby Doo movie. I'll get away with this if it wasn't for those Dawn Guard kids. Our draft, they had like different things. It was like the same criminal, like every time though. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm going to put these together and we're going to base them on with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. From that one inch mark. Okay. In the video, um, I'm going to definitely list um, 
Sincerely Jen's video. I watched it and she, I think her vinyl that she uses is from So Hungry Hippie and it is so pretty. I love that um, stocking so much because the vinyl is so unique. Now we're going to start at creating, making our, facing down our toe box and our heel. So I'm going to grab those. And of course the hill just wanted to magically vanish. <laughs> I found it. It had to be on the opposite side of the cameras. Bear with me for just a moment. <laughs> Cause you know, that's how I roll. Always dropping stuff. If I don't drop it, that's pretty much not my video. All right, here we go the toe box okay let's see. let's see let's see let's see so i'm gonna put the lining pieces aside the other exterior side and let's start on this toe box you can grab some double-sided tape and place it on the wrong side of your vinyl or cork or Waterproof canvas or <laughs> craft text. There's a million things you're going to be using. Faux fur. And I'm going to line it up. And press it. You don't need a lot of double sided tape. You can use more if you want to, but um, it is a. You're, it just. It's, if you keep it out of your seam allowance, you'll be fine. So we're going to uh, use one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna start off in a, in a corner or just anywhere you want. I wanted to get this video done because oh, today's the 28th, I think, hold on, I, I think it's the 28th. I'm really bad with days right now. Yes, no, Monday, November 28th, and I will have this video out tomorrow. Thursday is, the, is December. That is just crazy to think about it. We're about to start a new new year. That is, it's, that's very intense, very exciting. And I thought, hey, what better way to make some holiday stockings? Try to stop in the needle down position. If you don't, um, keep your fabric in place and then just pivot and go from there. So this fabric is from So Girly Fun. She has a couple of different prints out right now. She has this holiday one, which I appreciate because right now, if you're trying to, you know, make some holiday stuff and you're looking for holiday fabric, it could be kind of hard because in our world, most fabrics, you know, are created in the spring so that way people could purchase it and they, they get it for fall. Um, so I appreciate this because that means that I can grab my fabric right away. She does fast shipping and I can get some cute Star Wars. So I'm going to put this all together I'm going to get some, I'm trying to make sure the toe boxes meet or toe box meet kind of scenario. We have a wide seam allowance. We have a half of an inch. So you can uh, a lot to readjusting some stuff just to ensure that nothing moves. She also has Hello Kitty. Somebody was asking me after my Hello Kitty wallet got bought. They're like, where, where can I get some Hello Kitty fabric? And when I went to So Magical Expo, there was Hello, Hello Kitty. She also has like vinyl Hello Kitty too. 
like the clear vinyl. You know, all those little boxy pouches are going to like be loving me. Okay, so we're going to sew this together with a half inch seam allowance. And that, that really helps with um, making sure that everything is in, ca in case. Now, um, back stitch really well beginning in. Pattern, you can either pay for it and or this is the great part and or you can be join um, sincerely Jen's like show off group which I'll put the information in the description box and when you're in that group you'll be able to find the discount code to get this pattern for free who doesn't love a free pattern and again she does have a video instructions that you can follow especially if you don't want to have the modification where both si the toe box and heel box heel box <laughs> is on both sides then I, I definitely recommend it her instructions are amazing so I'm gonna put this aside because we're going to trim it down but we are going to do the same thing with the lining we're going to put the lining together except we're going to leave a five inch opening on the right side. So I'm going to put these together, clip it real nice. If I can flip, that would be awesome. So we're going to leave a five inch opening. I'm just going to mark the stopping and starting if, <laughs> if my pens, I promise you, I have like this theme with pens not working for me. All right. Half inch seam allowance. Get to that first mark and then I'm I'm just gonna back stitch really well and kind of just go forward a little bit more just back stitch again pull the threads all the way to the line that I just drew that you barely can see <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna cut these strings from the opening. And then I'm gonna go grab my pinking shears real quick. And you're gonna pink all the way around, making it to a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Do not uh, pink into your, or trim into your stitches or you would need to re-stitch that area. It's not a bad loss. You just need to go like one eighth of an inch above it. So that way, you don't have like inconsistency in a hole in your stocking. I like the way it sounds when scissor cuts fabric. It's like a weird peaceful sound. And I want Audible. Audible has this really cool, these really cool um, like sleep apps. I listen to them like all the time before I go to bed. Like they'll be like in the water or in the forest or Amazon or something. 
They need to have like sounds of the sewing room. Because I find it quite soothing. Like you can have like maybe like the iron press go off or something like you can hear the steam coming out. I'm just saying audible. You need to jump on that. There's a lot of us who sew that find the sounds of sewing, the sewing, the things going on in the sewing room really the like same. All right. We're going to trim all the way around here. There's no opening on the main. Now, if you want it to, if you want the stocking to have a little bit more body, you can definitely use fusible fleece. Um, it just will, it will be thicker. And it'll be, it'll look really nice, but it could be like harder to turn, pink, all that stuff. It all depends on what, how you want your, um, your stocking to look like. I've made stockings out of old quilt blankets. I've literally made stockings for memory, memory stockings, like a little bit of everything. I made leather stockings. I haven't made a cork one. I keep saying I'm going to do it and I just have yet to do it. And, um, MM cork has this really cool, it's like called off the plaid. It's like different, it's plaid in all different directions. And I thought it, that in red would be like the perfect, perfect holiday stocking. My house looks like, remember in the, if you, if you, <laughs> have you seen the elf? I, I'm pretty sure everyone here has, but there's a part where Buddy is in the store and it's like he's, it's a day before Santa comes and he stays behind in the store. And when he's behind, he's like making like, uh, snowflakes, mounting, like hammering on, um, cotton balls onto roofs to make it look like it's snow or whatever. And you come into the store and everybody's like amazed and they're like breathtaking, like breathtakingly beautiful. Well, when I was sewing on Saturday, my kids and my husband decided to decorate. We went about the tree. We did all that. And then I came down to the workroom. My whole house is like the front room, living room is heavily decorated. They took every Christmas card we ever get because we love getting Christmas cards. We, we actually keep every single one of them. And they're like dangling from the ceiling, like floating lamp lights, like <laughs> from Tangled or the lights from uh, candles from Harry Potter. They're all over the house and it's, they're flowing, floating from the ceiling and it is amazing, but I was not expecting it. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> all right, so we're going to now turn the exterior cuff right side out. I'm gonna trim off this extra thread right here. And this is why it's important. I wanted everything to match. So it, it just looks extra, like extra good. If they don't match, nobody will know. Nobody, nobody will know. <laughs> All right. All right, we hit, we turned it right side out. Place the exterior main inside of the cuff of the, with the right side of the exterior against the raw, wrong side of the cuff. So this, the exterior main goes against the right. wrong side of the cuff match raw edges the raw edges and baste with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance okay so we're just sticking this in Oops. would help if i straighten this out so we're going to straighten this out stick this cuff And then we're going to clip it. So 
so the cuff everything's just on the right side we're matching raw edges to raw edges I'm just clipping this. I'm an over clipper. I'm not afraid to say that. I I hate when things shift and I'm not talented enough not to <laughs> not to have things shift. Let me move this and this. Okay, so we're going to base this together at one fourth of an inch for seam allowance. Oh my. my oven is acting wonky. Right. Okay, so one fourth of an inch. And of course, it wants to act completely like a donkey right now. Oh. All right. I should have put this uh, spring whiplash thing in. Okay. And this little tell wanted to come out. Okay. Every day of Shinova and the never ending bobbin case. <laughs> Sometimes the machine acts super good and other times not so much. All right. One fourth of an inch. Back stitch. Sorry about that. Yeah, my machine sometimes wants to act a little kooky. I have to, I had to find a spring latch. It's a whole thing, but it's working out now. So we're going, you base this on at one fourth of an inch all the way around. Just trimming off rogue threads. And then we have our interior piece and then our exterior. We are going to put these two pieces together so what you're going to do is to make sure that they are going, I'm sticking the toe box without trying to twist it. Cause trust me, I have completely twisted it before. And I was like devastated that my stocking was like all twisty. If you do, then it's not a big thing. You can just, Pull your lining out. I mean, unpick your lining and from it, and then redo it again. It's not into the world. I'm just preventing you from heartache. <laughs> so I'm sticking my hand inside, and we're going to put this together. So I'm gonna grab some clips. And it's just like a bag. We're going to birth it out of that five inch hole. I could feel everything's flat. And sometimes if you see me repeatedly doing it, I just want that extra secure touch that yes, it is all together. Trying to make sure raw edges are with raw edges. All 
All right, so if you're following along, we're on page five and we're going to um, sew these parts together with a half of an inch seam allowance. Let me move this ruler and I am just going to bring my, my uh, stocking right to the half inch seam allowance, do a few back stitches, take your time, just make sure raw edges are raw edges and everything lines up. You can adjust, just make sure you have your needle down. So after we do that, we are not going to trim the seam allowance. We're going to turn the stockings right side out. So I'm just going to grab, stick my hand through the hole and grab the toe box of the interior piece. Take your time and don't do what I did. I did. I think mine's was not five inches, but you know, it's going to be good. Nobody, nobody will know. And then I'm going to pull out. This just poke out everything. You can, uh, with your tool, with any like pointer tool, you can go inside and, and, you know, uh, work out any areas that you, you're not happy with. Like you, uh, you can run, um, run it through the foot. If you're, if you're doing it my way where you're having two areas that have vinyl or I believe she has a method for using cotton too, then take your time, make sure everything's pressed out right before we close off this stocking. All right, so okay, everything is looking peachy keen. We're going to close off the stocking by sewing a one eighth of an inch over the opening. One eighth of an inch seam allowance over the opening. Or you can hand stitch it, do like a couple ladder stitches, whatever you want. If you do um, an invisible stitch or a ladder stitch, it'll be more seamless. If you use fabrics that match your thread, it will even look even more. So I'm going to stick my, put the lining inside. And then gonna roll we're gonna top stitch but we're going to have like a half an inch like we're gonna tuck down the lining to about a half an inch inside so that the cuff can be seen from the you only see the cuff when you're looking from the outside. So I'm just rolling down this to a half an inch and then I'm going to clip the 
use some clips to help keep one side down when I'm working on the others. You can eyeball it, you can measure it, whatever you, whatever helps you like, you know, make the processes easier for you. Okay, and I think that's it. So we're going to top stitch this down. Um, we're going to tuck all raw edges in, top stitch it down. Oh, that. I tucked the lining in by the half inch seam allowance and top stitched it at one eighth of an inch. And let's see. Oh, well, I'm going to just i'm going to from the inside out i'm going to top stitch i'm going to do a little something different here i'm going to top stitch or kind of stitch in the ditch where this lining is so it could permanently stay that way and what i can do is bring this over to my machine and actually stitch it down it'll be like a decorative stitch you don't have to do this but it's this is just one way to make sure that half inch you can sew at the half inch seam allowance you can sew from wrong sides out right sides out whatever is easier for you i'm sewing at one fourth of an inch so the i'm not going to go through as much as many as layers but it'll keep I'm like try to fill a clip around there, but I'm like, where are you? It'll keep everything um, nice and aligned. Now, when you get over to this area, where there's a little bit more thickness because the cork, just take your time. Use a hop jumper if you need to. These last little threads. All right. This is so cute. Okay. So we have. Hold on. I'm trying to get it really nice. On. Oh, there we go. We have. <laughs> We have a nice cuff that is cork with this snow day um, Christmas theme. Oh, look, and I got Leia and Princess Leia and um, Luke Skywalker really nice and centered here. We have our uh, hill and our toe box. We have our hanging. We folded it over about a half an inch and I did a top stitching. You don't have to do top stitching. It just, I don't know, with the cuffs, I probably even would go in with a second row just so I can be aligned but that's just me being extra and you have a perfect gift to give someone to make for your family um to sell at craft fairs um to do what you want to do and it's a free pattern so again to get this free pattern you need to go into sincerely jen's group join and in, i believe in the file section you'll see the discount code that you can use so when you put this in your cart you create an account you put that discount code discount code you get a free awesome pattern and it's super cute it's original this is really great for extra pieces of scraps of cork craft hex uh waterproof canvas water resistant canvas or vinyls that you want to use little pieces of and you can mix with cotton and i just thought this was the cutest thing it's fully lined and i think it's perfect for the holidays so if you have any questions in reference to this pattern, please comment down below. I'll be more than willing to answer any questions that you do have. If you want to see some more stuff, just put it down, put a request down. I am, I, I normally have um, the bags I'm going to make planned out for two to three months, but I'm 
always taking requests so that I know when I do my next set to try to include them. Uh, if you like what you see and want to support the channel, liking, commenting, and subscribing helps out the channel tremendously. And I appreciate every single one of my subscribers. If you want to go into a little bit more details of modification, I do have a Patreon. I'll put that information also in the um, description box down below. And if you're like, hey, I just want to say happy holidays and thank you for helping me make this, I do have a Kofi, and I will put that information down below and I will also pin it in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this pattern. I surely did. And until the next time we meet, I hope you have a great day. Stay safe and happy sewing. Bye.